Well, Jim, that's a nice transition to some other audio I wanted to play for you that I thought would be interesting to the listeners. You know, a lot of people that grew up on WWF TV watching it, not on the actual show, you were used to Lord Alfred Hayes. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Here's a small sample of Lord Alfred Hayes on WWF TV. Update this week focuses upon a finely conditioned young athlete. World Wrestling Federation ladies champion, the beautiful Wendy Richter. Wendy Richter now has a very firm grasp upon the title that she tore from that cast iron hold of the fabulous Moolah. <laughs> Wendy tours not only this country but the world, showing how good she is. She is capable of beating anybody. Let us see how she accomplished the task of taking the title from Lula. In front of a capacity crowd. One, two. Yeah, by the way, it's nice when you go to a recap and it's literally the commentator saying, what happened? What happened? <laughs> I'm getting all kinds of noises. Wendy Richter has a beguiling smile <laughs> for her friends. She can charm you with her presence, her conversation. <laughs> but woe betide those ladies who step into the ring to oppose her. Wendy has demolished all the... Well, we'll stop it there so we don't get hit with a copyright claim they play Michael Jackson's Thriller, which they didn't pay for the rights to play originally. So it's all sorts of problems there. But that's the version of Lord Alfred Hayes that fans in the Northeast and then fans nationally got to know. Yeah, what are your, boy. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this first? Well, first of all, when he said broke the cast iron of... I thought he was said broke the cast iron whore of Moolah. <laughs> <laughs> that was her nickname, the cast iron the whore. Cast iron whore. <laughs> no, no. Um, bless, bless Lil. We loved her. That was her um, era of women's wrestling, the cast iron era. Yes, <laughs> yeah. There, there's the golden age, the silver, and the cast iron age. Uh, but yeah, and for everybody now who's going, oh, Cornette, you take take the piss right out of all the accents of all of the English announcers and. And there's poor Nigel over there going, I'm screaming and I don't know why. I'm on a yacht with Tony Khan. Yes. But yes, Lord Al Hayes was ridiculously campy bad as an announcer. And it worked because they knew who Lord Al Hayes was from his days as a main event wrestler. And well, I mean, the, if, the fans I here didn't this, know that. I'm sorry. The fans here didn't know that. Well, they, that's right. They brought him in as an announcer, didn't they? He was known in the wrestling industry. He had wrestled and managed in other places, never anything with the WWF. So the first that's time true. WWF fans saw him was in the garden. I think the night Backlund lost the belt, maybe. Yeah. but And, and let's back up even further. Lord Al Hayes, uh, Judo Al Hayes, was a shooter. He was a judo expert in his younger days, what, the late 50s, early 60s, when he first got in the business. And he was later on through from the late 60s through the end of the 70s, really, first part of the 80s with the AWA as the manager run. He was a main event guy almost everywhere. And he was a tough guy, too. And and very nice guy, but that accent, it obviously he didn't really speak like that. It was that was part of the you know, the early 80s WWF when Vince first started forming his vision that everybody is an exaggerated caricature of their nationality or their profession or their, you know, whatever. And he was the only one, and it worked. And and bless Lord Al, he was a nice man, but Boy, that doesn't age well, does it? He was also Vince's sidekick on TNT and just a weak British man who was very kind and talked like this. Yes, Ar well, Arthur Treacher to... Who was it? Joey Bishop that Arthur Treacher was the sidekick to in the 60s? Like most of America, I didn't watch that show. Oh. Well, also, like, also because I wasn't alive. You weren't alive. But the <laughs> point is, he had a British sidekick. And that's what Vince was trying to do 15 years later. Lord Al Hayes was Arthur Treacher. Was it was it was it Merv Griffin or Joey Bishop? I'm trying to think. I don't know, but here's Lord Alfred Hayes a few years earlier, 1978 in the AWA. The city 
about the dastardly deed of your man, Super Destroyer Mark II, and tonight, the Crusher, and is he ready for this one, Lord Hayes? Let me answer the Crusher first. By his reckless actions, by his respect, irresponsible behavior. He brought into the ring a man who was incapable of facing us. We didn't want to hurt any little midgets. We didn't want to take them and strike them. It wasn't our fault. It was his. And we warned him the responsibility was on his own shoulders. All we saw in the ring were two tag team partners opposing us. What happened to Lord Little Brock was the fault of the Crusher. And now then, Crusher, you are going to take on uh, Super Destroyer Mark II by yourself? I won't be able to. Well, there it cuts off right there. But And Super but, Destroyer uh, Mark II is Sergeant Slaughter. Yes, Bob Remus. Um, and the presentation completely different. The tone completely different. And this was the evil English Lord Al Hayes that looked on Americans and the riffraff with disdain. And the match he's talking about, the Crusher got Lord Littlebrook, a midget wrestler, to be his partner against Super Destroyer Mark II and Lord Al Hayes because that's the way you humiliated the manager. Even though Lord Al Hayes had been a main event wrestler and was six feet three in those days, whatever the fuck, it was still Crusher's way, the most beloved wrestler in the AWA, of humiliating the manager. I can take a midget as my partner and beat your guy and you both. Are you disappointed it's not Little Crusher? Uh, there was no Little Crusher. Oh, there was Little was, Bruiser. It was That's Little right. Bruiser. And he couldn't use Little Bruiser. That'd be ridiculous. Well, Little Bruiser was out of the business by that point. Because the Little Bruiser match with Bobby Heenan in Indianapolis was 1972. And we're talking, what, 78, 79 here. Why wasn't there ever a little crusher? I get they couldn't find another one. There was only one, one size fits all. <laughs> 